Hey everyone, it's Park Sergeant, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 22, non-secretary version. My secretary is currently stuck in the snow, could not make it today, but that's all right. First email is from Brian. Brian says, hi Mark, my wife and I just saw the movie Hidden Figures, an apparently true story about three mostly unknown but brilliant Afro-American ladies who served with great distinction inside NASA in its early days. It seemed that their work was instrumental in getting John Glenn into orbit and back again safely. My wife and I thought that the movie was very well done and we thoroughly enjoyed it, especially myself from a more analytical social racial study of the times. Unfortunately, the movie made it clear that racial segregation was still in effect in the United States in those days, which in subtle ways may have hampered the early work of NASA. One thing about the movie that I did notice and I wish to draw your attention to uh, this, in case you have not seen the film, was the occasional globe model that was on display in several sequences. Not only that, but we saw John Glenn's space capsule flying around a clearly spherical Earth, and it was made to appear, through technical effects, that John Glenn himself was observing a clearly globular planet as he was circling the Earth three times. Am I not too safe to assume that this was just misleading special effects and what John Glenn himself would have seen all along was simply a flat plane rather than a spherical model? Let me answer that question first. And that is, you. most people don't even make this leap of faith, but, but I will. The NASA program, no, no astronaut's ever been on the top of any rocket ever. It's not that John Glenn saw a flat Earth when it was up there. John Glenn never went up there. If you're going to fake it, the last thing you want to do is actually put rocket people on top of a pile of liquid explosives, which that's all really a, a, an inner ICBM missile is, 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 a, is a pile of, of, of very volatile materials. A perfect example of this would be the Space Shuttle Challenger, which as you know, went and blew up, and then you have a problem, because when it blows up, you run into the Capricorn 1 scenario, which is, okay, well, the, all the technical data says that the astronauts died, but the astronauts, of course, are sitting in an Air Force base somewhere out in the desert, just waiting to, to come back, so what do we do with them? With the Space Shuttle Challenger, they had to just relocate them, and since it was the 80s, well, Nobody was going to check up on it. The internet wasn't even around, so no one was going to find these people. You just rename them or, or say that they have twin brothers, and everything's fine. When it comes to John Glenn and the Apollo astronauts, you definitely aren't going to put those guys up there just in case, which leads to the question of the Gus Grissom accident, where he and two of his comrades supposedly blew up on the pad and died in a fire. Did they actually die in a fire, or did they take two bullets to the head, and they were told, you know, the people told them that they died in the fire. So, so no, no, John Glenn was never up there. That's the short answer. Uh, he goes on to say, although I admire the personal achievements of these three black ladies, I think this movie took advantage of promoting a certain paradigm about the shape of our world, and at several moments made reference to, or at least showed visual images of, our world as a globe clearly not a flat plane. Could this movie have been at least partially motivated by NASA's desire to propagandize the American public and by extension international viewers as well? I'm just wondering about this. Let me know what you think and if you haven't seen the film yet you might want to check it out with your analytical eye. Uh, yeah, I'll probably download it. I'm not going to go to the theater but uh, I, I, may, I may download it. It's it's kind of a, a minor space movie, in my opinion. It's, it's like, yeah, fine, the, the roles of African-American women in the space program. I, I get the subtext. But the special effects are going to be no different than anything else we've ever seen in both science fiction and pseudo-science fiction movies. Uh, yeah, absolutely, they're, they're trying to prop propagandize it. But really, if you're going to go down that road, really uh, look at Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. That movie really took it to a whole nother level, and somebody pointed out that if you showed clips of that movie to someone that didn't even know it was a movie, they would believe they were real NASA images. That's how well done Gravity was. Not knocking the special effects team that's doing this for, for this movie, but Gravity is really what, what did it for me. And, of course, The Martian with uh, uh, Matt Damon. So... Anyway, thank you very much, Brian, for writing in, and hopefully that answers your question. 
moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Test by no name, just called Extra Crap. Mark, it seems like most I have found my way here looking into something else. I have never believed that we have been to the moon. It never made sense because the moon does not rotate and would provide the perfect military observation point for planet Earth. How could any military refuse to capitalize on that? Good point. Anyway, I have seen the Flat Earth videos pop up, and I, like many, ignored them. When you watch just one, you can't look at anything the same ever again. So the other day I set something to D. Murphy 25 but have yet had, had no reply. I thought the most conclusive test one could perform to prove the Earth does not spin. We go to the South Pole, but we can go to the we can't go to the South Pole, but we can go to the North Pole. So if you take maybe a hot air balloon right at the pole where there is no spin, you go up a thousand feet or more. Somebody will have to do the math with a time lapse camera pointed down at people or even lights a thousand feet or most in different directions away from the pole center. Shouldn't the effect be the same as the stars in the sky above? Shouldn't you be able to see the people or lights make that circular pattern on the ground below? This should close the book on the argument, I would think. That's an interesting experiment. No one's mentioned that to me. Of course, getting a hot air balloon or a, I mean, taking a weather balloon up to the North Pole, it would be tricky at, at best because there's going to be quite a bit of wind up there. Plus the true North Pole, if you believe in the North Pole, it's going to be over water. Then when it raises up, I don't know what sort of land markers you're going to have when you get up there when this when things start rotating around. If it's just water, it's going to be tough. You'd have to plant buoys everywhere. It's doable, I think, but it's going to be not just as simple as putting a balloon up with a camera. Plus, you'd have to have multiple cameras. I think you'd have like a north, south, east, west camera and multiple buoys out in the water with different colors for the buoys. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It's not a bad test. I, I actually like that. I mean, I've not heard of a lot of North Pole tests, but that's actually a pretty interesting one. So thank you, whoever sent that in. This one's called, what's this one called? F Flat Earth Conference. Hey, Mark, I just thought of a great opening ceremony or activity for the next Flat Earth Conference. It would involve participants bringing an old globe, whether it's from the back corner of the basement or from a pawn shop somewhere, depending on the venue. It would be a globe burning party or globe smashing event. At least some people can take their frustration out or perhaps some might need it for, uh, for a form of therapy session, kind of a book burning event. Okay, a couple things there. One, don't mention book burning and globe burning in the same sentence or the same paragraph because you know that, that conjures up images of some dark times in our, in our history. The other is don't, a globe burning thing isn't a bad idea, but you really should do it on private property. Because if we do do, if we do do a flat earth conference, if we do a flat earth conference, then you, there's going to, there's fire codes. You're not going to be able to go to a parking lot. You start setting fire to globes in a parking lot, the fire department's going to be there and they'll probably write you tickets and or who knows you generate some media attention i mean but then you'd have to have a lot of globes interesting thought but if you're going to burn globes probably shouldn't do it in the middle of a parking lot or in a downtown city area do it at home film it i appreciate the enthusiasm though don't get me wrong i'm, I'm all for globe burning as, as you know because i've seen i've showed it in my videos uh this one is flat earth and simulation show from Venice. Hi, Mark. Excellent show. And one of the best explanations I have heard on the Mandela effect. Oh, that would be the Insanity is Sanity, the 33 show I just did. I too think Flat Earth, Mandela effect, and other also narcissism are all linked. Narcissism? Really? I have known a number of them. They seem to be completely AI types. Artificial intelligence types. Just fill as you say to make the, say, the game kick along, or maybe a virus in the code. Anyway, back at the end of 2011, I started a book called The Veiled Gave. Veiled Gave? Published on Kindle in 2014. It took me a month to write and over two years to edit. The idea for it came to me like a download, and I had always felt it was partially channeled. Recently, an ex gamer friend read it. I had said, that I would have put FE references in it, but I only just got in into FE on March 14th. My friend said I had put references in it of Flat Earth. I told him 
he was mistaken. No way. Well, it turned out I made reference to the sky as a dome three times. I mentioned the book as a spiritual analogy in a computer game. Anyway, love what you do. Cheers, Venice. F-V-E-N-I-S-E. Thank you, Venice. Interesting email. This one's from John. John says, Dear Mark, all these private non-NASA move launches planned this year are going to be interesting to watch. And he's, what he's talking about is the Google Lunar X Prize finalists, which I've already talked about a little bit. You know what? Let's click on the link, the New York Times link, just to rattle off real fast. $20 million first prize for anyone that sends a probe to the moon. The finalists are, if I can find it, or maybe I can't find it. Uh, they don't, the New York Times doesn't do a nice job of listing them off. But there's two from America, one from Europe, one from India, one from Japan. $20, $20 million, first prize, the pro, whoever can send back HD images and data from the moon. Of course, you know, images is fairly, that's a loose translation. You could go just about anywhere with that. You say images, fine, a couple still shots. Who's going to make those? I'm best, I'm betting somebody should start a pool on this out of the five because the, the contest has to, has to start in 2017, meaning that the, the, the conditions of the contest is you have to send the rocket up in 2017, which, and most of them are delaying it to the fall or, or near winter of 2017, of course, because there's not a lot of time to, in space program years. So if they do this, how many of them will make it? Somebody get a pool going. Out of the five, I don't think two will make it. I think only one will make it, and that because you can't. If you have more than one, you have conflicting image problems when you're, when you're sending it. Not all five definitely aren't going to make it. You know, aren't, aren't going to be faked. I think they're only going to try to fake one, and the others are, are will uh, result in some sort of tragedy. That's my take. But that's that's going to be the big story this year is the Google Lunar X Prize. Arturo writes, Hi, Mark. I'm the one who called you from Mexico on your live show. Sorry I was nervous. Yes, anyone that calls in on Strange World, I know any, first time, you know, this is a public speaking thing. I, I, I'm right there with you. But you don't have to be nervous around me. I'm not going to come at you. So, uh, And yes, you got that right app. It's safer for me to say I've been following my Bigfoot instead of telling you what I do for a living and take a look at what time and date dot com even says about the current speed of our sun and as i'm saying this comcast just crashed he goes on to say it even says the speed of our sun at 827.4 knots or nautical miles per hour that day on december 21st of 2016 please see the attached pdf and tell me if you find any mistakes i made doing the math i'm thrilled for what i found and maybe maybe we can figure out a piece of this beautiful puzzle Thanks, Mark, for all your attention, Arturo. Thank you, Arturo. That's awesome. Lewis writes, or Luis, a screenshot of, oh, it's another meme. People send me memes. The highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. Excellent point. And we've got several memes along those lines. Mike writes, Hi, Mark. I enjoyed your videos and found them helpful. I ran into another vid today that makes me puzzle over the math. And since you kindly offered to be a resource, I'd like your input on it. The author is rude and obnoxious, but starting at 6 minutes, 10 seconds, he makes what appears to be a valid point based on geometry. And he sends me a YouTube link. The YouTube link goes to a video called testing flat tards part one awesome that's that that'll always go well in fact it was made november 27th 2016 by a guy oh yeah cool hard logic it's got 220,000 hits and i've already talked about him i don't like it his position is the distance across australia on the flat earth map is 8800 kilometers while we know it to be roughly third well that's just it we don't know what the distance is when you get to the southern hemisphere the perspective on the southern hemisphere when it comes to the flat earth we know something's wrong with the map when it comes to the southern hemisphere or i like to call it the outer ring we don't know we're, we're still working on it everyone's trying to figure out what's wrong with the ae map 
in terms of perspective. Uh, Rob Skiba did a nice job on it. He says there may be nothing wrong. It could just be the latitude and longitude lines. So he, this guy says, I wonder if longitude and longitude, longitude and latitude work on a flat surface because on a globe the distances are wider at the equator and decline going south at the inverse rate of northern growth when moving south from the North Pole. Would you mind taking a look and commenting? Thanks and best regards, Mike. Yet yeah, I refer you to the Rob Skiba video. The, the one he did on latitude and longitude lines, I think he did at the middle of 2016. It's not bad. That's that's the one I would go after. Jade writes, I just started watching Strange World episodes. Any chance you still have the empty shelves PDF? Yes, I do. Uh, before I did Flat Earth, I made a website called UrbanSurvivalUSA.com because the Katrina thing really bugged me because nobody prepared for any sort of natural disaster. So I made a little survival manual called Empty Shelves. It's about 100 pages long. It's nothing specific about zombies or viruses or meteors or whatever. It just tells you how to survive a long-term power outage, even if you haven't prepped anything yet. So if anyone wants that, you can always email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net, along with any emails you want me to read, and I will send it to you. It's just free. It's two megs. It's pretty cool little thing and you don't even have to write me anything in the email just say I want the survival manual Michael writes please keep my personal info anonymous all right I will not say your last name Michael I may or may not still work for a company I mentioned in this email please hello Mark I'd like to share an observation I've encountered sorry this may be a little long but you may find it interesting so I've been a flat earther since November of 2016 so a few months when I learned of it, I grasped it and understood it immediately. It all made sense and was amazing to discover it. I believe in Sasquatch. Well, I do too. Although I don't probably believe what you believe when it comes to Sasquatch and when it comes to the Northwest. And government conspiracies and missing uh, 411 is an interest to me. I enjoy learning the truth. I'm a truth seeker. Anyway, what I'd like to share is an observation I made with my three kids or, or, or young adults. They're 18 21 and 23. Well, yeah, they're young adults. In fact, they're adults, 18, 21, and 23, legally. My wife and I try to live a very organic lifestyle as best as possible. We believe food is our medicine and you are what you eat. Eat sad chickens, you become a sad chicken. <laughs> nice. That's a t-shirt. My daughter, the oldest of them, has become aware of GMOs, vaccination dangers, and pesticides in food and started to adapt to organic lifestyle as well. She's been organic for a year or two now. My sons are not. They are content with eating whatever and all the fast food crap and are not concerned with GMOs. I drive them nuts with my constant lectures of eating better and all that crap. But you can only walk a horse to water. So, the past few years, all the new things I would learn about uh, with Sasquatch, Missing 411, and conspiracies, I would try to have conversations with my family about them. My wife and daughter always seemed open to talking about them and truly believed them as I did. My sons were never interested in any of it. They seemed more annoyed or treated me like I'm becoming a conspiracy nutcase. And boy, when I presented them with the flat earth, I really saw a huge division amongst us. <laughs> you think? It took my wife and daughter a few days, and they're flat earthers now. The boys would become angry and annoyed if I would bring it up. It got so bad I stopped bringing it up to them. My oldest son would get visibly upset and would call, call flat earth stupid and would shout the earth is round. It wasn't worth the arguing, so we just don't mention it when the boys are around. It's truly sad. The boys won't even consider thinking about it and researching it for themselves. Uh, it's out of the question. But my daughter's... My daughter, she'll ask questions about it and is even trying to convince her boyfriend of Flat Earth. She's very open-minded. I truly believe there is something in our food and water that keeps us closed-minded. It's obvious to me and it's very concerning. I wonder if any other Flat Earthers have encountered this same thing or maybe it's just coincidental. Who knows? I also want to share this. I live in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and work for a company that developed and built the pilot and co-pilot seats in the Challenger shuttle. We are, were so proud of those seats back then. Oh, man, I was so naive. We also manufactured the ACES-2 ejection seat for the F-22s, F-15, and F-16. Not sure if you heard of the Thunderbird crash while Obama was in town for the cadets' graduation last year. We manufactured that seat that saved the pilot. On top of all that, we built ejection seats for NASA's WB-57 high-altitude planes. We were told that they are doing high-altitude observations and scientific explorations, possibly checking and maintaining the dome or something? Question mark? Smiley face? Thank you for doing what you do, Mark, and being our voice. Thanks again, and hope you find this interesting. 
a true flat earther in Colorado and supporter of Strange World. Take care, Anonymous. Well, mostly Anonymous. I told him his first name, but no one's going to know. You're fine. Frank writes, European Space Agency revealed plan for Lunar Temple, the Daily Mail online, and it is called the Incredible Lunar Temple. It's on dailymail.co.uk under science tech. Yeah, again, any anything that you see that mentions a story or a relevant thing outside of supposed Earth orbit is just a reinforcement of the globe. That's all it is. And those are leaked usually by NASA. This one's by Jim. Hi, Mark. I hope you have a chance to call me because I'm a slow typist. I've debunked the midnight sun argument against the spinning ball. I was really into this one, and I thought it was the bulletproof against the spinning ball, and I used it on about 30 people until I debunked it. I was wondering if you have any pull with some of those other Flat Earth YouTubers. Call me if you want to walk through my proof. I also would love to talk to you about some of the problems I have with the Flat Earth model, such as fast sun, slow sun, what the hell is an earthquake, did the machinery of our terraria break down, or have we angered the gods? I agree that flat earth truth will cause a spiritual awakening, but mixing flat earth truth with the wrong spiritual paradigm, and we could have the opposite of what we were hoping for. Anyway, I'd love to talk to you. Jim, P.S. I just realized I'm in my wife's email. If you want to email me, here's my actual email. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll contact this guy and, and find out what uh, I need to know. This one's from... Ba, ba, ba. Who's this from? Eddie. Hello, Mark. I've recently uploaded a 14-minute video on YouTube that's causing some controversy. I listed six emergency landings that took place in the last two years or so that prove we live on a flat Earth. The flights mentioned in my video are... Number one, China Airlines from Taiwan to Los Angeles, emergency landing in Alaska. Two, Cathay Pacific from Hong Kong to Los Angeles, emer emergency landing in Alaska. Three, Qatar Airways from Chicago to Doha, emergency landing in Moscow. Number four, Emirates from San Francisco to Dubai, emergency landing in Moscow. Three, Lufthansa, Lufthansa from Shanghai to Munich, emergency landing in Moscow. Six, PIA Pakistani Airlines from Islamabad to London, emergency landing in Moscow. One of the people commenting said all the flights in the Northern Hemisphere are north over Moscow due to the Great Circle. But I dispute that because according to authorities at the time, MH17 shot over Ukraine was actually flying east to what it was supposed to be flying, proving this flight's the don't arc. If they do, they actually arc south and then fly east. I believe all the bogus formulas and CGI links he sent me are pure theories when the facts show the contrary. I live in Japan, and you have answered my email before about the night goggles. One of these days, I'll try to call into your show, although I don't know yet how this is possible. Big hog, Eddie Allen Carr. And the video in question, if you guys want to know what the name of this video is that he made about the, the six emergency landings, is called Flat Earth, Six Emergency Landings That Prove the Earth is Flat. And the channel is called Flate Earth, F-L-A-T-E Earth, Banjo, USA, Japan, and Brazil. Awesome. Cool. Love the, the research you did there. This one's called Question. Hi, Mark and Secretary. Well... She's not here to answer this. Thinking about our spinning globe and earthquakes, shifting plates, and seismic detection technology, has this been tested on a micro scale? Can you reasonably assume the sporadic shifts and seismic activity would be expected on a cons consistently spinning marble? I don't know. All I know is that if we are on a flat plane, this place was created and every part of that system is artificial, including tectonics. I don't know. When it comes to the globe, I'm not going to try to debunk plate tectonics when it comes to a spinning spherical model because I think the spinning spherical model is a piece of crap. This one is from Karsten. Thanks, Mark. One thing Eric DeBay mentioned in one of his videos, and I can't find it anywhere else. I've watched open source astronomy classes trying to find it, but cannot. He stated that beyond the Earth and Moon's rotation syncing up perfectly so that we never see the dark side of the Moon, that the problem with that was that this could not be possible if the Moon actually moved in the direction it seems, and so the experts have said it's an optical illusion and that the Moon actually moves across the sky in the opposite direction. 
do you have any resources that give a good explanation of that and how absurd it really is? Also, I'm hearing that the Flat Earth Society official page is actually an intelligent a intelligence asset. Any truth to that? Karsten Tyrone Smith with a whole bunch of letters next to his name. I don't, I, as far as your first question goes, I don't, I don't know what you mean there, how the moon is not moving in the, the right direction. All I can tell you about the moon is that it generates its own light source. That light source is actually a cooling light source. You can test this out yourself. It is 400 times narrower than the sun, but yet it is 400 times closer to the sun. That's what they say. So that if it's perfectly in front of it, that's another coincidence. And of course, the fun coincidence is that it, uh, lost my train of thought here. The fun coincidence is, oh yeah, that it never syncs up, or, or that it, that it's perfectly aligned with the Earth, so that we it we only see exactly the same face of the Moon from where we are, it, which is unbelievable to me. The the st statistical probability of that is way 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 out there, because you would think at the very least you you'd get like a quarter degree turn maybe even a year but no we 10 years 100 years it's perfectly synced up with us so uh, that's all i got for you when it comes to the moon those three things should be enough i don't know what eric's talking about the, the other part so have, have him clarify when he gets a chance compass on commercial flight this is from dave Hi, Mark. My brother is going from vancouver to the philippines tonight on a flat earth map the real direction will be going over alaska uh, to Philippines. However, the plane will show him going west. Do you know what kind of compass I should buy him for his trip? I was told a regular compass would need to be calibrated, but an electronic one might work. Thoughts? Thank you, Dave. I would bring both and compare the two. That's what I do. And then film both of them. So you probably need a, well, if you're using a one from a, a compass app, you probably need another phone to record it. So see if you can get an electronic one, just a separate one and a regular magnetic just straight up magnet one and run them side by side that, that'd be the way to do it unfortunately when he wrote this that plane is coming one it was like a, at least a week ago but thank you dave for writing that this one's called support what's this one about this one's from paul hey mark love what you do here's an idea for others to show support for the cause i ran a line of green duct tape across my back window of my car to represent the flat earth. Easy to do. I got the idea from support police where you run a line of blue painter's tape instead. When you see that, you are not alone out there. It makes it easier to go through this process. There is power in a united logo. Keep it flat. Paul, that's great. Love it. Green duct tape. That'd be that'd be fantastic. It doesn't have to be a lot of green, but that would, that would be great in case you don't have a logo. I'm currently working on a, a back sticker thing for the car so that people can can show their support and and you can see other people and drive it on the road it's like yeah it's yeah that, that's a great idea love it green instead of blue hopefully it won't confuse the police because you might get pulled over it's like you know you're supposed to run blue tape not green and then you have to explain to them or you can play innocence like oh really it's blue oh, i didn't know this one's called TV Golf Tournament Curved Lens. Hi, Mark. Check out the Farmers Insurance Open Golf Tournament in La Jolla, California. Early rounds are being broadcast on the Golf Channel, and they're using some sort of fisheye lens to make the wide ocean view a curved earth. Never seen that before. Not what you would ever see just by looking. How dishonest can they get? Must be feeling the flat earth heat. Regards, Dawn. Yeah. I would imagine we're going to see more and more of that curve. Although the more fisheye lens you see at horizon level down here, you're going to run into problems because it, even the, the the worst person's going to know that isn't the case because you can see it with your eyes. So if you go to the, you go to the beach, you see flat. If somebody shows you a picture of a severe curved earth from the beach, then you know, even the even the the most non-intelligent person I'm not I'm trying not to call names here is going to be able to figure that out so hopefully they they won't continue down that path this one's called flat earth recreation hello mark going through my twitter feed I see this and there's some cool little ice patterns some flat earth stuff and I I, I can't show you guys the link on that one so 
This one's called No More Satellite Dishes. Sky TV will be available without a satellite dish in 2018. The Huffington Post in the UK did an article called Sky TV will be available without a satellite dish in 2018. So no need for satellites anymore then. Keep up the great work, Abhi Shai, A-B-I-S-H-A-I. -I. So look up that when you get a chance. Interesting article, Sky TV will be available without a satellite dish in the UK. Great article. This one's called just Flat Earth. I get a lot of those. This one's call says, Hello, dear. I have watched all the videos in the Flat Earth, and one of them calls me a lot of a cause calls me a lot of attention. But my English oh, is not enough to understand everything that is said in the video. I am looking for someone who can share with me the text or something that is reference on what is said in the video on forests on Flat Earth. Can please can you help me? Thank you so much, Godro. And I sent it to him. I I. I grabbed the transcripts from that video. If somebody wants the transcripts from No Forest on Flat Earth, I think they're out there. I think people have already done subtitles, but I have it somewhere on this machine and I can I can send it to you. I sent it to him. So it's in English, of course. This one's called Nibiru. Hi Mark, I think you are brilliant at what you do. I believe what you say. However, I can see daily the chemtrailing 100 planes went over one day last week. I live in the UK, not even on a flight path. The government is hiding something. How does Nibiru fit in with Flat Earth? We are under constant fog or low clouds most days due to chemtrailing. One clear day last week, the horizon was lit up full from the east to the south before sunrise. Something seems to be coming. How will it affect the Earth as you see it? The redness in the distance seems to be getting less now. Even when it's cloudy and cannot see the chemtrail planes, I can hear them through the night and day. Cheers, Dave Owen. Yeah, Dave, I believe in chemtrails. I do. And I've said this on several different shows. I just don't know what they are. I don't think anybody really knows what they are. Is it a low-grade poison? Is it a vis visibility thing? Is it a genetic altering thing? Is it, a, is it the Morgellons thing or Morgellons thing? I, d I don't know. It, they're, they're doing something with the sky, and they're using commercial air traffic. They're piggybacking on, on commercial airplanes to do it. I, don't, I just don't know what they're doing with it. Nobody – and the reason I can't – I'm not going to lean towards any one theory – is because I who knows exactly there's there's no there's a lot of speculation but nobody has any concrete proof in any I'm really surprised nobody from the airline industry that, that gets underneath those planes an airline mechanic hasn't sent me something or hasn't sent somebody something this one's called two sons here's a picture for you uh, to have fun with the Chinese 360 picture check out with the two sons on my iPad if you got the surface on the flight of uh, fight, fight, fight of the earth. You will get a sun if you go ten swipes left. You go see a second if you drop down to the moon's surface. Uh, it's a bunch of pictures. Thank you, Chris, for sending that. Although it doesn't help me much in this, I should probably preview that one better. Sorry, guys. This one's called "Hello, Night Vision UFOs." Flat Earth, please don't say my name on air. Okay, I will not. That's how you're supposed to do it. Put it in the title or put it in the first line. Hi, Mark. I am a non-spinning baller and would like your and I like your vibrant, uplifting demeanor. Well, that's awfully nice. I don't like the dome as it implies things on the outside of the dome within our visible light dimension, which is tiny slither within the electromagnetic spectrum. Maybe our dimension fades out beyond human perception at the edge of the flat earth realm. Yeah, maybe. Why are flat earthers still trying to disprove the globe when Eric Dubay did this 200 times already? 15 months ago. <clears throat> What, well, because we're, you got to keep beating the drum. Why are flat earthers trying to prove their map or model when this is impossible without the freedom, technology, and funding to do so? Which, why? Why wouldn't we? Why, why would we stop? Do you think that the UFOs you say you see through night vision equipment are human origin, Earth realm origin, or interdimensional in nature? I think it's probably all three, because they've been around for a very, very long time. I don't think it's the Americans just alone, of course. Uh, again, look at the 1899 Aurora incident, the 1561 Nuremberg incident, all, all these. You know, they've been UFOs have been around there for a long time. Do I think they're us necessarily? No, 90% or more aren't us. As far as Earth or interdimensional, could be both. 
could be could be someone trapped in here with us. Could be other groups that are on the continents outside of this place or the the, the dimensions outside of this place. Please, can you do a short video where you talk in depth about your UFO night vision knowledge and experience and explain how your listeners around the world can get involved in this most interesting activity? Cheers. And I'm not going to say his name on air. Yeah, go out and buy some night vision binoculars. Not monoculars, binoculars. I you I went through a bunch of different ones. The the best bang for your buck is a gen, generation one. You know, there's generation one, two, and three night vision. But if you're looking up in the sky, Gen One is just fine because you're not going to need super great detail. The best magnification you can get is usually five X. Don't go for anything less than 5X. If you have the money to spend, if you have a couple grand, get a 10X. But if you have less than $500 to spend on night vision, then get a 5X that, and get something called the Night Owl Pro Gen. You can usually get them uh, new or used on Amazon, and the, they work really well. They're not actually lenses. They're, they're television cameras that have you know, lenses on the, uh, on the eyepiece. And you, you, you dial in each eye individually. So if your eyes are kind of weird, you can, you can dial each one in. And then just start looking up on a clear night sky and tell me what you see. And if you want to know what else is up there and you don't want to buy the night vision, look up a channel. I think he's down in Australia. It's called UFO Lou. Interesting channel. I used to subscribe to him, but I'm trying to be all flat earth now. I may still subscribe to him, but it's an interesting, interesting channel. And what he does is he uses a night vision camera and just points at one part of the sky and lets the camera run. And he still gets quite a bit of stuff just in that one small fragment of the sky. So that's what I do. I, I haven't really done it much since I've been up here in Canada doing the flat earth stuff, but it's it's definitely worth your while. This one's from Kathy Dunson regular writer and she sends a article from the sun magazine it's from the uk and it says nasa fears cosmic rays from outer space will damage plane passengers brains yeah yeah it's in her comment down below yeah the, another reason supposedly you cannot go to outer space poor saps on the iss and folks at the daily sheep will need to wake the flock up yeah absolutely right Every story you see about space, no matter if it's harmful or helpful, or, oh, look, a meteor's going by, oh, an asteroid's going by, oh, a face on Mars, there a thing on Saturn. doesn't matter. does not matter. It is the subtext. The subtext is always the same. Story out in space because you're on a globe. Everything else does not matter. They do not even care if you look at the face on Mars. They just care that you're thinking about, just briefly, the face on Mars from the globe all they're doing so thank you kathy for that this one's called just a thank you hello mark just wanted to say thank you for all your efforts i got into flat earth ideas first by darren nesbitt which is one of the thing, videos i put out on my flat earth short list it's a playlist i have on my channel for new people it's my second or third one down Darren darren nesbitt did a fantastic public speaking thing where he went into a great slideshow about Flat Earth in front of a group of people, and it got a ton of hits. It was great. Uh, don't know if you're aware of him. Yes, I am. I found your videos on YouTube and was basically floored. Strange world indeed, but most of all, thanks for believing in educating the public masses. People, however, you call us, know about what's really going on. Keep it up, Eric Akuff, A-C-U-F-F. -F. Thank you, Eric. That's awesome. Moving on, this one's from... Joseph from Iowa. Mark just wanted to show you some screenshots that I had saved on my desktop. The first was taken on December 23rd, 907. The second was taken a month later. They are definitely skewing the numbers, and it's way worse than I even thought. We're talking millions. What he's talking about is they seem to be trying to curb our enthusiasm. They know that Flat Earth is trending really well in all search engines, but they're trying not to let the fire burn so hot that that no one can ignore it so they're 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 putting uh, like a governor on it like an engine they're trying to cap it and he's saying i mean from 30 million to just 7 million uh, on one of the search engines is absolutely insane anyway just save these on my desktop and wanted to share it it's ridiculous have a great day joseph from from iowa yep that's why i did a video series on it when you go into youtube and you type in flat earth most of the time now you will see when you if there's no filters it'll say four million even though it used to say 7 million all the time. The real numbers, if, if you type in flat earth and you sort by 
upload date, that's the filter on the far right side, then you'll see the real numbers, which is over 15 million. That's that. That's what it always should have been. They've been trying to keep our enthusiasm down because if we keep seeing the score go up and up and we're just crushing all these other mainstream topics, you know, we can go to our friends and say, look, it's tracking better than anything you can, you're even watching on television. That, that's not absolutely true. But a lot of the topics, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one's from... The guy that did the license plate fill test, F I L T A S T, which of course is flat, it's flat every other letter. So F L A T is every other letter, and I T S is every other letter from California. He wrote a quick little email that says name calling. Mark, I find it irritating that many of the folks who oppose the flat earth concept seem to have not given it an unbiased look. Ritz resorting to name calling is the most childish response to any potential discussion. The attempt to equate idiot with flat earther is ridiculous. I'm not an idiot. My IQ was tested at 163 and I was in the fourth grade. Maybe I've lost an IQ point every year since for the flat earth concept to be seriously considered sarcasm. As humans in this existence, I don't think we are meant to have all the answers. I do think that we should search for truth whenever possible. If the truth challenges the socially accepted norm, it will be met with strong opposition. Respectfully, Steve from California. He's one of the Flat Earth License Plate Club members, and I love the fact that he hit it. He hit it so well that even a Flat Earther would miss it. You know, it's flat with a jumbled thing. That's great. I don't know how he came up with that. That's awesome. This one's from... Who's it from? Johnny. Mark, so glad to see your phone still works, and I did leave my phone number with you. I'm sure you were probably tracked by all the ABC agencies from all nations, so let me share what I want to talk about because for now, no one is doing the science stuff, probably because none of us have the money to do the science stuff. Yet, hear me out. It seems to me that there are three domes. Three domes. And if you have any insight into sacred geometry, then the Holy Trinity makes a lot more sense when you apply it to the firmament protection of our world. The sun dome is always at a Pisces circle with the pole Pieces, P-I-C-E-S, Pisces circle with the pole or north star dome. These two domes have only the Pisces intersect. Sorry, I am probably ruining sacred geometry and the flower of life, but it is when you put two circles together and they overlap. As for the moon, it is a second dome and has the ability by spiritual or magnetism to pass through the day and night domes. My thoughts come from my own observations and studies because I noticed they always do the ISS space feed with the sun dome. After watching weather balloons go up in the day, I say the pitch black that is used in all NASA Earth shots. However, someone did a nighttime weather balloon, and no matter how high it went, the stars and constellations never went away. NASA might catch on and do a mix-up of night stars with day Earth balloons, but then they still would have to explain the positions of the constellation and stars. The other things I have discovered because the flat earth research uh, because of flat earth research is that there are no nuclear no nuclear weapons. There are no dinosaurs, no evolution, chemtrails are harmless. Of course, all things connected to space are a lie that there are no GMO foods or crops because you cannot splice a bug DNA into a plant or animal or human because sacred geometry or God would not allow such an abomination. Hmm. There are so many lies, and they all lead back to the Jewish Talmud. Thank, look forward to your future research, as I would love to know how the dome really works. Was it made to hold in all the fallen angels or demons so they could not move on? And since we are not evil spirits, could we move beyond the dome without using 40,000 tons of TNT to try and blow a hole in it like they tried on those military Antarctic expeditions? My mind is putting so much together right now. And I do hope in our lifetime we will be allowed to look through the Vatican 3D telescopes and see what uh, stars really do look like in HD. Much love, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. We well, said a lot of stuff there. How much time do we have left? 30, 40, 40. Yeah, we got still some time. This one's called Outside Atmosphere. Mark, when we argue about the Earth not spinning and why it's not faster for a plane flying west, we always get the argument, it's like flying in a car and how we can, how, 
can a fly move around in a closed car? It's because of the atmosphere. Then how can the space shuttles and satellites leave our atmosphere and not been left behind because I thought we were traveling through space at 60,000 miles an hour? The fly moves around until he leaves the at its atmosphere in the car, pushed out by the window, and then can never catch up to the car. That's from Todd. Interesting point. And I've, I've actually said this recently. And then, in fact, another flat earther mentioned it. I mean, I'll bring up a different point, which was we've all seen that animation where the Earth, this whole solar system is spinning through the galaxy like a shotgun blast, a, a bunch of pellets. But what's interesting is that they have all the planets perfectly parallel to the sun. If the sun is the main gravitational force and the sun is dragging the planets with it through the galaxy, wouldn't the planets not be parallel? Wouldn't the solar system not be flat? Wouldn't it be this dragged cone shape? Because the sun, you know, we're, we're the minor gravitational force. The sun has got to be pulling us along. Especially if it's going through the galaxy at half a million miles an hour, some of, some of that effect. It's not going to be parallel, right? Right? Uh, unless science says, no, no, it's absolutely parallel. It's, it's locked in and, and it's still flying. Really? It doesn't seem like it's that's a natural property to me, but pff, what do I know, right? This one's from Seth. Mark, found this intriguing theory concerning more global world deception. Also shows the difference between the Earth and the world. My motto has been the Earth is flat, the world is a globe, and not too many get... Wait, my motto has been the Earth is flat, the world is a globe, and not too many get that without explanation. We found two interesting things in that video. Uh, and I will let you know what the video is called. The video is called the... The flat Earth population is under 1 billion. The world's population is over 7 billion. Okay. Interesting. This one's called Hot Places by Nathan. Hi, MS from London, England. Can you help me? Why are some countries hot and mine is cold all year long in flat Earth? I mean, how does the sun position make countries like Jamaica hot all year long? Yep, the Earth is not a ball with rain flying up. Nathan from London. When it comes to temperature, you get to remember this, the, the sun is not the only heating device. Like there are many different, well, several different ways to heat something in a car. This system is along those lines. You're, the jet stream probably has heating properties. The underwater conveyor system probably has heating properties. The magma system has heating properties. I think a lot of the heat still comes from the ground. You say, oh, no, the sun radiates to the ground and everything's soaked in it. It's from there. And uh, I, I believe that this system has multiple properties. Like a car, sun shines in from the window, air, condition, air conditioning system inside the car, heated seats, different things, same object. Probably not the best explanation in the world, but you know what? I'm going with it because I got to keep going through these emails because I'm never, ever going to finish them. This one's called Supermoon by Nathan. Recently viewed a supermoon. What was all that about? I mean, why did it appear so big on flat Earth? Please give me the true science behind this math. Thanks. Like the radio YouTube info you put out, just keep it clean. <laughs> okay, first, I always try to keep it clean. I, I very rarely swear. I, I do sometimes, every once in a while, but it's not it's not often. I, I try not to as much because I, I swore a couple times during an interview and some lo lovely Christian women decided that they would write me an email and say they were, weren't going to ever listen to me again. I was like, all right, I, I don't want to ruffle too many feathers. I mean, it's just language. When it comes to the moon and the stars and the sun, treat it no different than a planetarium. Try to help tell people. It's like, Forget about the supermoon. Think or people say, you know, talk about star trails. And the star trails are interesting because there's no parallax, but think about the bigger stuff. How can a blood moon exist on a flat earth? How can waxing and waning crescents happen on a flat earth? Because technically there's no earth between the sun and the moon on a on a flat model. There isn't. Especially the blood moon. It is part of the display system. Yet, and this is why I bring up the planetarium, yet we can simulate a blood moon or the waxing and waning crescents very easily in a planetarium. How do you do it in that? Projection system. That's all it is. 
People keep focusing on the sky, and I know, because you can't get up there, it's more mysterious. It's the ground systems that are more complex. The sky system, that's easy. That We can do this now. Again, look at the Truman Show. I know it's not, we, we never built the Truman Show, but if you could build a 20-mile-wide planetarium, that's how you do it. It's just a giant planetarium. This one's called A Different Approach. Different Approach. Hey, Mark, I know this isn't as cool as a personalized license plate, but any chance I get to promote the Flat Earth on a dirty FedEx trailer, I take it. Yes, yeah, so this guy I think works for FedEx. I don't know what he does at FedEx, but he, and you know, FedEx trailers and semi trucks are always, you know, do this on any semi truck or any dirty car that you see that you can get away with it. He just wrote with his finger, Flat Earth, or research Flat Earth. And it was fantastic. It, it, he wrote, you know, big giant fingerprint letters. So thanks, Jason. I think I included some of your stuff in, in some slides. Great, great stuff. Love the enthusiasm. Love thinking outside of the box. This one's called Flat Earth Proof. And hi, Mark. I've been looking into this globe conspiracy for about a year and a half, and I've finally come to terms with the fact that the plane we live on is indeed flat. I've been showing people your videos and Eric Dubay's, and I encounter a lot of resistance and get called a quack. But if I take the angle of not mentioning the flat earth and just show proof of how NASA is just a massive hoax and all their videos are fake, I get a much better response. Watching the live ISS feed and seeing the astronaut take his glove off and a couple of bubbles come out of his suit is more than enough to get people onto the fact that NASA is completely green screened and fake. Heck, even just watching the sun and the moon move across the sky and then seeing the stars at night moving in different directions proves to me that the Earth can't be a spinning ball. Anyways, just wanted to thank you for putting this stuff out there. I also wanted to ask if you knew anyone who is out there collecting data on the plane so we can prove it to the masses. There are drones I could build that use solar panels, could fly for more than 24 hours if underneath the sun. I was thinking if this drone was built, it could be programmed to fly underneath the sun and map its path around the plane more than proving the flat earth. You know what, just for that, I am going to give this guy's email address out. If you've got an idea about using a solar-powered drone that could prove the flat earth, you can write him at, one sec, his name is Elliot, and his email address is akduck503 at gmail.com. That's akduck503 at gmail.com. He apparently can build solar power drones. If someone come up with a cool experiment that could utilize his talents, by all means, get a hold of him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do more emails like this. If people wanna get in touch with other people, I'm gonna start being matchmaker here and try to connect people with other people. So if you don't want my email, your email address read, let me know. This one's called FE. Mark, I've been researching the flat earth theories from the turn of the year, mainly on YouTube, and just wanted to say thank you for your valuable information and help in enlightening my mind. I have gone from a feeling of complete emptiness and worry when I first found out that the earth was not a globe to a state of higher consciousness in what I now know the world is. I've spoken to my 38 year old wife about this and even my father who is 72 and both were perplexed at first but are now also doing their own research on the internet as none of their counter arguments could stand up to my factual knowledge. I have even shown my six-year-old daughter pictures of the LEM, it's the lunar module by the way, as she is learning about space travel at school. I asked her, does she think that this spaceship could travel at thousands of miles per hour through space and land on the moon? She replied that she thought it looked like a Joe Sobo, Sobot? Joe Sobot, who was a toy robot I made for her out of cardboard and tinfoil when she was younger. Keep strong with your quest. And let's get the truth out there. The human race deserves to know. Best regards, M. Thank you, M. How much time do we got left? We got a few minutes left. We'll, we'll go a few more. Let's see if we can end on. Oh, I know who we're going to end on. We're going to end on this second one. We'll do two more. This one's from Luke. Hey, mate. I watch a YouTube video you made on Flat Earth. What did you base your theory on with the dome and the fit out beneath the ground. I, I don't know what that means. I have watched and done a little bit of research and I've seen good points on both sides, but never have I seen such a statement from your videos suggesting that the earth we live on was created to keep us in. 
I've also done a lot of travel, and you can fly from Sydney to Santiago, Chile. Oh, the Sydney to Santiago, Chile. In 13 odd hours, your theory of flat Earth would make Latin America the furthest point to fly. It, I wasn't sure what I believed and have been open to everyone's opinion, but some of your theories really baffle me. Thanks, Luke. Luke, uh, the first part I didn't understand. The, on the dome and the fit out beneath the ground, the flight out beneath the ground, I don't know. As far as the Sydney to Santiago, Chile, what I try to tell people is the, the time does not matter right now. Yes, we know, we know we've got issues with the map and perspective, which is review clue nine, which is when I was looking at it, I couldn't track the plane because the plane dropped off once it got over, over the water. If you can't prove the route, if the route doesn't exist, then the perspective is got to be screwed up. And if the perspective screwed up, it doesn't matter how that flight got there. Of course, it also should bother you that there's almost no nonstop flights in the Southern Hemisphere at all. Out of all the hundreds of flights down there, anywhere between Africa and South America and Australia and New Zealand, hundreds and hundreds of flights, there's maybe a, a handful of nonstops even listed. What, but that doesn't bother you? you know, if, you're, if you're looking for straws to try to knock down Flat Earth, this isn't it. This, is the, this was given to me literally on week one when I made clue seven and people were saying, oh, I found a nonstop. It's like, fine, prove me the route because the route doesn't exist. The route disappears. The GPS system does not track planes over great distances of water. And that should be impossible because the GPS system is satellite based. So what is it? I don't know, reviewing old stuff for you guys there. 